God, give me the courage to speak thy word today. Holy Spirit, rain down on us. Fill us with your love and transform us today. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, fill up our finders. There's no doubt that this world is coming to an end. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> we have politics running left, right, and center. We have government officials involving themselves in scandalous behavior. We have pastors and church officers committing acts of adultery, fraud, and other abominable acts. Turn to me, turn with me in your Bibles to architects. First Peter tonight. I will read in your hearing. But you are a chosen people. Let us pray. 
Dear God, I want to thank you for bringing us here safely. Lord, as I am about to speak to your people, please speak to me and help me not to be this nervous in Jesus' name. Amen. To be called is to be chosen, to be selected for a special purpose. We all like to be chosen, don't we? When we are chosen to play on the schools, football, basketball, or cricket team, we feel special. 1 Peter 2 and verse 9 says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. This means that we have been chosen by God himself. God has handpicked us for his purpose. All of us, no matter our age, our background, our appearance, our gender, God has called us to be his sons and daughters, church and church. This is good news. Imagine we have been called, selected, not by the captain of the school's football or basketball team, not by the West Indies cricket board. More than that, we have been called by the creator of the universe, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Jesus himself. That makes us special. We are to behave like royalty because we are. We are to behave different, a peculiar people. We are called to be different from the world, to walk, to talk, to dress, to behave as children of the heavenly king, talk to church. First Peter 2 and verse 9 continues to say that God has called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. You have been called out of the sin, of the darkness, of out of the evil doing into God's marvelous light talking church. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> tells us that we are the light of the world and we are to let our light shine so that others will glorify God when they see how we live. Our lifestyle should point them to God, to show them who God really is. God is calling you to be his witness to a world that is in sin. He has also called us to go forth into all the world and preach the gospel. Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20. He has also called us to proclaim the everlasting gospel of the three angels' message in Revelation 14, verse 6 to 12. In essence, he is calling us to warn boys and girls, men and women, that he is coming and that we must be here. Talk to me, church. Hello. Every day, our fellow youth are dying without a hope. They are being gunned down by rival gang members, drug pushers, and drug dealers. We must bring hope to them, to let them know that there is a better life in Christ. As Jesus walked along the Sea of Galilee one day, he met two brothers, Simon and Andrew, fishing. He said to them, follow me and I will make officials of men. And straight away, they left their nets and followed him. Samuel responded immediately to God's call. Today, God is calling you to be his disciples, to be his witness. How will you respond? Will you leave whatever you are doing and respond positively to God's call? Jesus is coming. He's coming sooner rather than later. Time is running out and there is no time to waste. We must get ready to meet him and we must Warn the world before it is too late. Let us respond with urgency, with passion. God calls the youth because he knows that we are passionate about what they do. Isn't that true? Yeah. We have vigor, we have energy, and we have vitality. With our 
youthful passion, we can turn the world upside down for God. In messages to young people, the Lord's servant says, with such an army as workers, as our youth, while the chain might furnish, how soon the message of a crucified, risen and soon coming Savior might be carried to the whole world. Fellow youth, let us answer to God's call passionately, not half-heartedly. The people in the world who are working for Satan are passionate about what they do. Let us be also. Adolf Hitler, Osama Bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, the gang members, the drug pushers were so passionate about what they were doing that they were willing to die. We must be passionate about God's cause. Let us put all our energies in what we do. Commit ourselves wholeheartedly to God. Consecrate our lives to Him so He can use us to finish His work here on earth. Amen. and spread your gospel. 